Hello! Nick found these two books in a local bookstore and he impulse bought them for me, so thanks Nick! This is so exciting. I thought I would have a look through these today and we can check them out together, so let's get into it! So the books are colour mixing recipes. One is for watercolour and the other is for oil and acrylic. They are by William F. Powell and it includes one colour mixing grid. Intriguing, we shall check that out. Basically it's got mixing recipes for more than 450 colour combinations. Now I think I've seen this book on Amazon and if I have I'll link it in the description below. It's actually an omnibus so it's like all of the books put together. So I will look around and see if I can find some links for these books. So so let's start I think with the watercolour one and then I'll flip through the oil and acrylic. It's got a list of paint colours needed to create the colour recipes in this book. Burnt sienna, burnt umber, cadmium orange, cadmium red light, cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow deep, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow pale. So basically all of the cadmium yellows. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, dioxazine violet, gamboge. I think these are quite old fashioned because now you have new gamboge. Originally 2007, so yes, yeah, some of these would be out of date, these colours. Hook is green, Indian red, ivory black, lemon yellow, mauve, Naples yellow, permanent alizarin crimson, permanent rose, phthalo blue, raw sienna, sap green, ultramarine blue, vermilion, viridian green, and yellow ochre. So yeah, there are a few names in here which are a little outdated and different colours have come out. Permanent Rose, I'm guessing would be Quinacridone Rose now. I know I have some of these colours in my collection, so I'll just flip through and we'll take a look at what we can get with them. Okay, so here's a little thing about the mixing chart, which I will get into at a later time. So it's got a little bit about colour theory, mixing your primaries together, creating secondary colours and tertiary colours in a colour wheel. We have our intensity or chroma, warm and cool colours, colour psychology, interesting. And then we get into the colour recipes themselves. So at the top it's quite useful, it's got the colours needed to create all of these mixes. So this one, for example, is cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium, and Naples yellow. And then you can create all of these depending on the different levels or concentration of the paints, I guess. So if I lift it up a little bit, for example, this first one says 25% cadmium yellow light, 75% Naples yellow, and water level one. Another example is two yellows with a cerulean blue. like some of the mixes in here they're interesting so I think this book would be really useful especially when you're starting out and learning color theory I mean for me color theory is kind of something that I just instinctively tend to do I haven't really done a lot in the way of technical study when it comes to color theory but I think it's always good to have something like this because it just it helps remind you of what colors go nicely together and it's also kind of a good way where you could pick a color scheme and that can inspire an idea for an artwork so you might want to pick something that's really warm like this one or you might want to go for something that's a lot cooler so I think this book is useful in quite a number of ways not just for mixing colors but also just for getting a color palette idea for an artwork that's I think how I would probably use it mostly And this one's interesting, it's mixing lemon yellow with an ivory black and you can just see how murky that yellow gets when you mix that black in. So most of the time when you want to make yellow darker it is actually not a good idea to add black in because it really does go this completely different colour. Okay now the other thing I'm noticing, up the top here it has intensity recipes for example and then these ones in the pink are colour recipes. 
Ah, so they are slightly different. Ah, that's what this one is. This one's a value recipe. I wasn't even looking at the top of the page. Oops. So color, basically mixing different colors to get different hues and tones. Value to get your lightest to your darkest shadows. And there's a few different ones in there. All mixing with ivory black, interestingly enough. And then color intensities. I'm teaching myself as I go through this book. Okay, so color intensity. Basically, it is using complementary colors. So on one side, you've got dioxazine violet, and then its complementary color, or the opposite color, is cadmium yellow. And so when you start to add in cadmium yellow to the dioxazine violet, you're actually dropping down the intensity of the purple, and then it's going slowly into the yellow spectrum and vice versa, so you add in a bit of purple and then it goes back that way. So you're neutralizing your colors right in the middle there. Oh, portrait colors. Now this one could be really interesting because I'm forever trying to work out color mixes to do portraits. And then there's a little bit about warm and cool areas in and around the eyes. That's not something I know very much about, so I should be reading this page in depth. And then Going into the back, we've got a color index. Okay, I had to study this page to figure out what it is. So as an example, if you are looking for a specific thing and it's got quite a lot of different subjects in here, let's say we want to paint a green cabbage. Now it says number 56 here and I was looking and this is page 39. So it's definitely not page 36 because there are only 47 pages in this. But when I was looking back through, each of these swatches has a number and 56 is this one here which is 35% cadmium yellow deep, 60% viridian green, 5% cadmium red light and water level 3. So if you want to mix a cabbage colour that is the swatch that you are looking for. Let's check out another one. Since we're on greens let's go bottle green, dark 45. So it even has different light and yellowish colors which is quite cool but let's just check out dark 45 so that one would be considered bottle green interesting and then we have actually quite a lot of things in here so i think this is a really useful little book it's not a big book but it's a handy one. I like the fact that this book is quite thin because I think it would be really easy to take this in a bag somewhere if you were out doing some plain air or something like that or even if you're in a classroom or you're away from the internet and you've got a little book like this that you can just flip through and maybe get some ideas on how to mix a color for a specific thing. So I think it's really great. It's a great little travel book. What I might do is look at the other book first and then I will pull out the color mixing charts and we'll look at those together as well. Okay so color mixing recipes for oil and acrylic. I'm guessing it's going to be quite similar in its layout. So we've got a contents page showing how to use the mixing thing at the back and then we've got our same color theory pages in the front. I think that's pretty much exactly the same. Although you could tell that that is oil or acrylic paint rather than watercolor so it might be slightly different for it. Does it have a thing with the colors? It does, just quickly while I think of it. It also has the paint colors needed. Alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, burnt umber, cadmium orange, cadmium red light, cadmium vermilion, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow light. They do love the cadmiums in these books. <laughs> Cerulean blue, chrome oxide green, cobalt blue, cobalt violet, ivory black, magenta mauve, Naples yellow, permanent blue, permanent green light, thalo blue, thalo green, thalo red rose, thalo yellow green, raw sienna, titanium white, ultramarine blue, venetian red, vermilion, viridian green, yellow ochre and zinc yellow. So these are very much traditional colors that have been around for centuries, probably at least decades. So this looks like it's been published a few times starting in 1994 so this is a pretty old book as well so it's basically the same concept although in this one you're not mixing in water with it so starting off with yellows and greens going into blues it's got the blue line acrosses for color recipes
and then we have value recipes which is essentially the same thing it's that cadmium yellow light mixing in with black so that is pretty much the same as the watercolor page and it looks like we've done the same with a red and a blue so the three primary colors for the value recipes and then in here they've called it graying with compliments so basically that is that same one i was talking about in the watercolor book where you've got your complementary colors and when you mix them together you can neutralize each color so this is a really useful thing to know and i do mix my colors like this a little bit although not as much as i probably should so <laughs> this is good for me to remind me to do some of these things and once again portraits which i think is really great Portraits are probably the most difficult thing to paint, especially skin tones, so I think this is so useful. I think there is actually a specific portrait book, and if I ever find that, I might want to add that to my collection. And then going in here, we also have these same ones. Look, there's cabbage again. <laughs> I remember acacia and amethyst, so I think it's exactly the same list as what it was for the watercolors. And this is interesting, it's got an oil and acrylic conversion chart. And then there's a little bit about the author. At the end, in both of the books, is this envelope. So I'm going to pull the colour mixing charts out and we'll take a look at those. Solid piece of plastic. I'll just put them down on here so we can see them more easily. So these are quite different from each other. And from what I gather, looking at the pictures, so it might want you to have two parts of phthalo blue in which case you would squirt the paint onto one square and two squares and then it might want four parts of cadmium yellow and so then you would squirt a line of four squares with cadmium yellow and then you mix it and then you end up with that color on the watercolor mixing one it's a bit different because you're adding water to it i think i'm actually going to have to put some paints on here and figure it out because it's confusing me a little bit i think the best way is to just learn by doing on this one this one's fairly self-explanatory but i'm also going to have a go with this so i'll grab some paints and i will make a few of the color mixes Okay, I'm going to do the oil painting first. I found some oil paints and I am going to do the cabbage because that's the one I was talking about before. So the cabbage wants four white, two cadmium yellow medium and one viridian green. So one green. I can see this is going to not be very precise but hopefully we can get an idea of how it will work. There we go. So incredibly annoying I cannot get that lid off that tube so i found another couple i've got cadmium yellow deep and cadmium yellow pale i do not have a medium anywhere it's very annoying but i might just mix in some of this deep with a tiny bit of the pale and hopefully that will get us a fairly medium looking color i finally got this open so i think that should be close enough <laughs> it's gonna have to be isn't it i've forgotten two parts yellow isn't it i'm just going to add in a tiny bit of the pale just to hopefully lighten it a tiny bit I'll just do that. That's roughly two. As you can see, it is not easy to add this paint on here because these squares are so tiny. Someone gave me their old Art Spectrum paints and they are clearly ancient because none of them are working. So I found my huge tube. This is also a pretty old one too. This is titanium white. Hopefully this is working. Ah, this is what happens when you don't use oil paints for a while. They go a bit yucky. I always have bits of paper lying around, so I'm just going to take off the top layer of that because it's very gross. It's got particles and things in it. Okay, there we go. There's some fresh paint. I might just use the palette knife to stick it on here. <laughs> I think that's about four. <laughs> I'm just going to try mixing this and see what happens. This is going to get messy very quickly. Right, just that small amount has made a huge amount of paint. Look at it. This is the mix that I have ended up with. Let's just pull out the book and see if it's even close to that. Theirs is way more yellow than mine. So it actually looks a lot more like this one here. And this one says two Viridian green. So I think the Viridian is just really overpowering. And maybe I should have used about half of what I've put on here. So it's actually pretty hard to mix a color combination exactly to that level. But no matter, I'm just going to use the paint anyway. And I'm only going to use 
these three colors I've decided these three and I'm going to paint that cabbage really quickly because I've got the paint here and I have no idea what to do with it other than chuck it in the bin which is a bit of a waste so I'm just going to paint directly off this so I don't have to move it anywhere else It's kind of a cabbage, granted a very abstract looking one, but the colours turned out okay. I mean, I've never painted a cabbage before in my life, so I was going off a reference, but I ended up just making it up and just blobbing the rest of the paint on because I didn't want to leave it all on there. I really need to clean this up, so I will put all of this lot away and then we'll take a look at the watercolour one. That is never going to look the same again. Uh, it was such a nightmare to clean. I should have used acrylic paints I think. Oil paints on this is not the best idea and I was at the sink for a very long time trying to clean all of that off. I'm going to try the watercolour one now. I've got just some cheap paper. This paper though is actually quite good. It's a watercolour paper. I paid the grand total of four dollars. I've got my Schmincke Horodam paints because in here some of them are cadmium colours. Those yellows are cadmium yellow, lemon, light and deep. And I also have a vermilion. I think that ruby red will be like the permanent rose they've got. So I think I can make up some colours from the ones that they have in the book out of this set. And I need to figure out how to use this because I have no idea. Okay, this one I'm going for bottle green. That was the other one I'd looked at. And I think I've figured it out. So bottle green, which was this one down here. It says 20% lemon yellow, 30% cadmium yellow light, and 50% phthalo blue with water level 4. Hopefully that comes to 100%. So if I just do 2, 3, and 5 of these squares, that should come up with the recipe that I need. Here we go, I found it, the water dilution levels. So level 1 means the greatest amount of water and level 5 is the least amount of water. So level 4 is strong intensity using just a small amount of water. Finally found that, that took ages. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to choose cadmium yellow lemon, cadmium yellow light and helio cerulean which is the phthalo blue in most other sets. Two lemons. I mean I guess I could do two squares like that. I'll just make a big mix, shall I? Otherwise, rather than fiddling with one tiny bit there, because I think that will drive me a little bit crazy. So two cadmium lemons. My tin is dinging. Um, yeah, <laughs> slight issue there. It does not look like the picture, does it? Oh well, I'll just throw some paint on and we'll stir it all up. Cadmium yellow lemon. Next one, cadmium yellow light. And last one is Helio Cerulean, which is going to be all five squares. I still had yellow on my brush. All of these colors are incredibly bright and stainy as well, so it's hard to get your brush clean sometimes. But there we go, that's a bit better. I'm going to need quite a lot more of that. All right, I'm just going to mix the whole lot together and see if I can get bottle green. This is much easier to use than the oil paint one, that's for sure. And if I bring the swatch there, it's kind of there. I mean, obviously a printout swatch is never going to be quite the same as what you get in real life, but it's pretty close. So I'm going to use this to paint the bottle that I have on here.
another masterpiece. <laughs> just a really quick sketch, more just to demonstrate what the color mix looks like. This actually worked pretty well and I think I would get more use out of the watercolor one than I would with the acrylic one, mainly because it's a lot easier to spread the paint on here and to clean it afterwards. It really does give a great idea on how to mix different proportions of colors. So for example here we had 20%, 30% and 50% and I mean, I really tend not to think in percentages when I'm mixing colors. I just randomly mix whatever. I'm not trying to get an exact color. But if you are, then something like this is incredibly useful to get a really close approximation to the color that you're looking for. Just while I've got some paint left, this is a little swatch book I put together a while ago. I thought I would just show what complementary colors do to each other. So I'll put some green down and I'll get some red really quickly. I'll go vermilion, I think that's reddish enough. Can you see how that neutralizes it? More vibrant red over here, and I'll just see if I can merge it in together to make a gradient. So that's pretty cool too. Well, that cleaned up a lot more easily than the oil paint. Even with the Thalo Blue, which is a notorious stainer. So what do I think of these books? Well, obviously Nick bought them for me, so I'm going to say they're amazing. <laughs> but honestly, they are actually really helpful. I was a little bit dubious as to whether I would actually end up using them. I don't think I would use the mixing tray for this again, because it made one heck of a mess. It's just much easier to do it on a palette. But I think it is really useful to have these recipes that you can make up a color that looks similar, at least, to the swatches. It's Especially if you're looking for something in particular. I mean if you had a reference photo or something and you color matched a couple of them to the reference photo then it's going to be much easier to know which colors to mix up. So I think it's really excellent for that. The only issue I have is that some of the colors are a little out of date but you can find other colors which are very similar and it's just a really good way to practice learning color theory. I mean color theory in itself is pretty dull. It's not a subject I particularly care for but it is something that you kind of do need to know as an artist. So I like the way these are presented. They're nice and simple. They're easy to understand. If you're a watercolor artist you're only going to want this one and vice versa for oil or acrylic. So I think these little booklets are very handy. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and I will see you again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye!